Hello and welcome to Morris Park. I'm Clyde Morris. I'm sorry I haven't been around for a while, but this is ragweed season. And ragweed season means I can't hardly talk or anything without sneezing, coughing, or uh, not being hardly able to talk. So from like August to uh, beginning of October here, I stayed pretty allergied up. And uh, so I just didn't do any videos at all because I just didn't think it'd be worth it. But anyhow, welcome to uh, the Fall Euphorbia Tour. And this is going to be in several parts. So uh, just sit back and enjoy, and uh, I'll show you some euphorbias. And the first one I'm going to show you are something you wouldn't even expect. that are not only in the euphorbia family, but in the same genus as all of these. And they're native to here. This is euphorbia dentata. Euphorbia dentata grows here in the park naturally. It's a native here in Missouri. It grows uh, in many states. Farmers spend a lot of money just trying to get rid of this. That's what they call spurge. But this is not only in the same family as your succulent euphorbias, but in the same genus. And you can see the seed pods look almost identical to what you'd find on something like obesa or something like that. Nice big fat uh, three-sided pods. And you can see many of them are spent already. They've already launched off. And this is an annual euphorbia. So this plant will die off when it's done seeding. And uh, next year we'll come back from the seeds. Now this euphorbia here is euphorbia maculata. I mean, it's a weed and it's, uh, you can see it's coming in with uh, this apuncha here. But quite common, you uh, see them all across the country. They grow in driveways and sidewalks and any little crack they can find. And I can't get quite close enough, but right there is a bunch of the flowers and seed pods at the end. And this is another annual euphorbia. It'll only be here for this season and once it's done with its uh, flowers and seeds, it'll be gone. But yes, still related uh, in the family of Euphorbia C and the genus Euphorbia, believe it or not. Now this one isn't native, but it's another little Euphorbia that uh, is quite common around here. It's a hybrid from uh, Euphorbia caracus is what I've read. I don't know, even know what they actually call the hybrid. But it came with some Siberian iris. They're kind of getting buried by it now that we bought somewhere else and just came with it. So it was kind of a bonus plant. And it'll just die back to the roots uh, come in the uh, winter when it freezes over good. And we'll come back next year. Another uh, euphorbia that uh, isn't quite what we expect. Okay, now we're on to some of the succulent euphorbias. This particular euphorbia I've had for well over 40 years. Started from a cutting, had to do the two-step method to get the tree. And this has turned out to be a fantastic tree. This is euphorbia evansii. See, it's got that nice old trunk. Kind of reminiscent of a bonsai tree. Like I said, I started some a little cutting. If you don't do the two-step method on the cuttings, they just tend to grow longer and longer. You can start them from these little branches, you get longer and longer. But you can also start them from these big, thick main stems also. And then you'll get the normal tree without the two-step method. If you try it from this, you'll have to root it and then cut it to get the tree form. Nice tree. I love this tree. It's, it's a, a real beautiful plant. I've really enjoyed having it. Now this is my Euphorbia Abyssinica. It's the largest Euphorbia I have in the greenhouse. I believe it's uh, roughly eight feet, I'm thinking. It's a big one. I've had this one quite a few years. Uh, I'm gonna say mm, at least 20 years. And when I bought it, it was not near this size, of course. It was a little thing about uh, eight inches tall. Grown from uh, so I could cutting like this. Turned out to be a very large plant. Repotting this plant, and I have uh, this back in my videos changing the soil out of this pot and giving it new soil and everything is a real, real chore. Because I have to tie this uh, euphorbia off the roof 
so it won't fall over. It's very heavy. And um, for about a year after redoing the soil, it has to stay tied up so it doesn't fall over out of its pot. This is my Euphorbia Zigzag. This is a hybrid Euphorbia. Euphorbia Pseudocactus crossed with uh, Grandicornis. You can see where it gets the Grandicornis form with all the twisty for, uh, ribs and the large thorns sticking out everywhere. Reminiscent of a Grandicornis. In fact, this looks like a miniature Grandicornis is kind of what it is. Grandicornis has much larger, thicker branches. This was grown from seed back in 1985. Um, I had a branch cutting that was growing, and again, the branch cuttings don't grow normal in this. And uh, it pollinated itself and got a seed pod, and I was lucky enough to get the plant. It came up in another cactus. I never caught the seed, but it came in with another cactus. That's another thing about euphorbia is their seed is kind of explosive. It just fires off, and it'll go somewhere else in the greenhouse, and you'll find them growing in another pot somewhere. This has been a very nice plant. We really love it. Taking years to get the form. And basically, if you start from a cutting, you won't get this normal form like this is, where it branches out from main stems that are down inside of it. So basically, it's just the main stems growing branches as they grow. So let's see down in here. See the little branches growing out of the main stem. But uh, anyhow, it's been a good euphorbia. It's got a few spots on it this year. I'm not sure if that's just from heat or what. I had it in the full blazing sun all summer, so not really sure. But anyhow, a great euphorbia. This is euphorbia tortillas. This is kind of a success story on this one. I bought this uh, quite a few years ago, and then it decided it was going to die on me. Started turning yellow and, and get what I call dry rot. And the branches just start turning yellow and turn leathery and they just kind of die off. But working with it and working with it, I changed the soil on it a couple of times, I think. Gave it a lot of food. And it took quite a while, but all of a sudden just picked up somewhere and started growing. This one uh, is from India, if I recall right. Real beautiful euphorbia. Has that kind of twisty look to it. Hence tortillas. Great euphorbia. Glad it came back to life for me. And it's growing real nice now. These will kind of get to like a uh, shrubby tree. So over the years I'll probably have to uh, prune it and uh, try to keep it small. Okay. This is my Euphorbia Lactea variegata, and it's the uh, tricolor. You can see it's got pink, white, with the green marbling, and it is a grafted one. Now these will grow separate from a graft, but they're much slower and much more susceptible to dying. Variegated plants do not have the strength that a green one does, so if you put it on a green stalk, it tends to uh, strengthen the plant. And they grow much faster and much healthier. You can see the union down there. I did not graft this one. I bought it this way at uh, Lowe's some years ago. And I have a little bit of a collection of these uh, crested lacteas. I really like them. This is another one. And it's more of the white form. You don't see a whole lot of green in it. It's grown a lot from when I first got it. I mean, this thing was really small when I got it. And it has just grown huge. It's a beauty. Great plant. Anyhow, this is uh, my Euphorbia tour for today. I will show you some more uh, later on. My phone's about to cut me off. This is Clyde Morris from Morris Park. Take care and have a good day and stay tuned for the next episode.